this show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. Welcome to today's review of women's podium training at the 2023 U.S. Championships brought to you by Norbert. You guys are going to talk about Simone and Jade and Suni and all the stuff that you didn't see if there was a live stream. I didn't know if there was. There, there was a live stream. There was. Okay. Uh, this <laughs> I is checked August. it to make sure we weren't on camera because <laughs> oh I was God. worried about that. And I was like, oh, good. I can look ugly. It's fine. <laughs> I can so. <laughs> have horrible posture and look like a slob, like always. We're not in the in the podium training stream. It's great. <laughs> it's August 23rd, 2023. And welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica. I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Room Situation, who is live blogging this meet. And um, welcome to our sleep deprived, not quite yet sleep deprived, immediate reactions without the deep, deep analysis that we do on our weekly recap, which will be coming up next week. So here's how our special coverage works. Uh, if you're a Club Gymnard member and you're not watching live, switch to your members only feed so you can hear the whole thing. Um, and everyone can enjoy the headlines from this episode. And then we switch over and our our coverage continues for our Club Gym Nerd members on Behind the Scenes because they're the ones that pay for our trip and are joining us live here to talk about this meet in real time. So um, let's talk about the headlines from podium training, uh, starting with yeah. okay. Simone Start, off. You might have heard of her. Yeah. I love that it was basically like, because we have, you know, all of us gym nerds have the brains of goldfish. So after cl at Classic, it was like, what's Simone going to do in podium training? What's Simone going to do? And now we're like, Simone's got this. What else is new? She was She's great. She did her routines. Basically the same as we saw at um, at Classic. Uh, she did three Yurchenko double pikes on vault. The first one was shorter. It kind of looked more like 2021. Onto, onto her um, hands. But not as yeah. scary as the one, the bad one in 2021. We've never seen another one, one like that. Yeah. The, not the bad one wow. where we're like, she broke her back, everyone. Not that one. This one was just under her hands, and then she did landed one perfect. Yeah. Then one was a little over-rotated. No worries. Yeah. Seemed fine. It was like everyone from World Champions, at least on their first vault, kind of forgot how to vault for a second, which happens in podium training. <laughs> Some people got over it faster than others, but we all watched that Um first the first vault for everyone are we like Do they, are they okay they're gonna be okay they're gonna be okay all right they're gonna figure it out namby pamby asked whether simone has a second vault she did not do a second vault today yeah so she has laurent says she has a chung um but they they see how she warms up her double uh double pike and then they decide from there it's kind of like they're not gonna go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth all the time until they need to that's kind of the the decision it sounded like that they had made so um i what i really appreciated about watching simone this time was just watching her do basics i i just think you know for me you know i feel like the the average person can be blown away by the, the acrobatics of simone because she is incredibly acrobatic and has one million skills named after her but like just watching her do her tap swings and her tap swings are so perfect that she just adds a little juice and does a, you know, out of nothing, a perfect giant. It's like little things like that that I'm like, her technique is so good. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's just, she's good at everything, everything. Um, and it's funny, I was talking to um, Zoe and Zoe Miller, and she said that she thinks Simone is stronger than she's ever been. Um, and I was talking to Joss about Simone and she was like, you know, Simone never lets us take anything seriously. And what she always says is like, it's just gymnastics, which I love so much because do you remember when we talked to Jamie Dancher back in the day before everything blew up to smithereens as it should. And we entered the new era and Jamie Dancher was like, it's just gymnastics. Like stop taking this so seriously. Like, I wish someone would have told me that before I went to the Olympics and before I thought the way I did. So to have Simone in the gym, telling the other gymnasts who are up and coming and right there, like Joss is, it's just gymnastics. Don't take it too seriously. It's so fucking healthy. <sighs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Carrie says, Jessica, I got the Simone banner to take to worlds. Yeah! Oh my god, I'm so excited to see their, that everywhere. I hope people have it here at Championships. Um, what else did you uh, appreciate watching from Simone today? 
Um, first of all, do we want to talk about our very wonderful sponsorship? Oh, yes. This, our championships coverage? Okay, we should. I want to thank uh, Norbert's. Because, like, have you ever thought, like, I want, like, my dream, obviously, this is the kind of thing I fantasize about, is, like, my dream is a company who will work with coaches and me personally to design equipment and training tools that like I personally want, um, like bumpers for the side of beams. So you never have to worry about falling off, um, that are foam padded. That's actually what I want. Like, so I can do anything and a bungee cord so I can just tumble on it with bumpers. Don't have to worry about falling off or being injured. Right. The dream. So Norbert's has been in the industry for over 45 years and they are innovators and they want to make your job easier. So they have all the stuff, um, and from all the different manufacturers and they work with people to create their own specialized products. Uh, and that includes from preschool levels to rec to elite gymnastics to um, what am I pre preschool? I think we've pre, all agreed pre, pre. that I'm I'm getting I'm starting to get ready to start preschool. Like I I'm moving toward being ready to start preschool. I still have a problem with sharing, uh, but whatever level Norbert's has what you need. Norbert's mats are manufactured in the U.S. and a facility in Southern California. They have skilled sewers and friendly and knowledgeable staff. They'll take care of you and your order every step of the way. It's that extra step, like quoting three different shipping carriers, which is a word I have learned how to say, and I'm not saying characters even once, uh, which gets you the best rate um, and shows that they really care. So you can view and order over 1,600 products on their website, give them a call, send them an email to place an order. Uh, also, if you are like us in San Jose this weekend, Norbert's is at National Congress at booth number 721. Uh, so stop by and say hello, and you could be one of the first 10 people to mention Jim Castic and win a free t-shirt. Also, I wanted to mention one more thing about Norbert's is that some of their original products like I were talk talking about that they've, uh, they have are the boulder handspring trainer the ninja obstacle set and the canyon bar blocks and you know how i love anything with ninja in the name so you can mm. check those out at congress at their booth all right your other favorite thing about simone from this competition what else she's great did was there something else specifically that i liked watching from simone yeah, how Zoe Miller said that um, who the person most, most likely to survive a zombie apocalypse with her would be Simone because mm. Simone, uh, the, she thinks they could get it together long enough to take the situation serious, like stop giggling enough to take the situation seriously. Mm. Um, and she also said, don't tell Simone be this, but like sometimes she's smart. So... <laughs> Zoe Miller is a quote machine. I think She's that's something we've learned. So this funny. You guys, <laughs> Zoe Miller is going to kill it in college with NIL. Kill it because she is hilarious and she's got a knack for this. So, yeah. I also asked Shailise the same, but I asked it differently. Shailise, which of the three of you, you and your coaches, two coaches, would be most likely to die first? in a zombie apocalypse. And she said it's her coach, Sarah, who she does those ballet videos with. So, you know, <laughs> other news that you have to know, we talked yeah, about really important news. <laughs> really important. Leading with the zombie apocalypse news <laughs> as usual. Um, yeah. SUNY, you guys, the upset, the good thing is that some SUNY was here. She's able to train more. Mm -hmm. Her goal is to do all around a camp if they can. So that's huge news. Um, she did do bars here. Um, and but you know, and she does have a Yurchenko double fold there, they'll use it if they need to. But her plan is to do all around. But the era of pickles is over because she has to really watch her sodium intake now because of her uh kidney disease. So she has to, uh, yeah, oh God. The, I know. But her, I talked to her coach, and her coach was like, But it's nice to remember the pickle era. So I thought that was very, that was a nice positive spin on it, which is what coaches are supposed to be for. Yeah, so SUNY is on the start list just for Vault and Beam, which are the two events she did at Classic. Those are the two events she qualified on. She would have had to petition um, to compete others, and per USAG, she did not um, petition to compete the others, but she did do bars in podium training today. We didn't see her do anything on floor, but we saw her do bars, similar skills to what she did in podium training at Classic. Didn't put everything all together, um, which she didn't at Classic either, but we kind of saw the same elements. 
Um, I thought she got kind of like, you could see the frustration as the rotation progressed. Like she wanted to, you know, which is natural because it's like, we know what she's capable of. We know that she knows she can do more at her best. It's like, you really want to be out there doing everything you can possibly do. And she's not there yet. Yep. And it was interesting talking to Jess, her coach. Um, he was saying that um, sh- the hardest thing about all of this is just like accepting that this is something she's going to maybe have to live with forever and that she has to just like adjust her diet and they have to go by how she's they're doing a combination of going with how she's feeling and medical tests. So both. So they'll ask her how she's doing. And he's like, I don't understand the things that the doctor, like all the lab tests, like she measures, they're adding more things for her to sort of measure. They're adjusting what they're doing, like her blood pressure sometimes. And then she reports it back to the doctors and then they give her, they give basically her coaches and SUNY the prescription for the day of here's Mm -hmm. what you do. And he's like, but basically we just go by how she feels. So some days we can train normally, then some days we'll have to take a day or two off. Um, But uh, that like the plan is there. And he also said that he, I asked him like, are you worried at all about kind of the national team and the selection committee? If she can only do two events, I was like, but it's SUNY, you know, I can put her on two events and you can use her in the final and she'll win a medal, especially on beam. And he was like, yeah, like I've talked to them. He's like, I am not worried about them not taking her because of this and everybody knows where she is and the medical staff is involved. Mm-hmm. So they didn't feel in any way, I feel like, which is very different from the olden days, that she, this medical condition would be a hindrance to her making the team if she's able to do what she needs to, even if it's just two events. If one of them is you're going to use it in the final and she can win a medal, that she would still be able to really be considered for the team. So that was nice to hear. I thought there was an interesting moment in the Lili press conference. Oh, yes. This is the thing we need to talk about that I am uh, really, I'm I'm pretty furious about this. Well, there's two things I'm furious about. Um, but I am so excited that I didn't have to be the first one with a rage meter about it because Nancy Armour of USA Today already wrote an article about it. So, um, and I got to cross this off my list of questions for Lily. So remember at Classic when Simone gave her interviews and she said, um, yeah, the, so there was someone on the inside team in USA Gymnastics who said that I was the gold medal token. Um, and so Nancy Armour asked the question to Lily, have you talked to the, do you know who this is? And have you talked to the national team staff to let them know this is not acceptable behavior? Um, and Lily's response was, I did apologize. That was the first I've heard of it. I apologize to Simone. Um, and then the follow-up was, well, who is this? Have you taken care of this? And she said, well, we don't know who it is. Um, but I have made it clear that, you know, this is unacceptable. The disappointment here is, first of all, of course, you, you know who it is and you could find out who it is. Um, and I think that she probably doesn't want to say who it is because she does not want to burn uh, burn the gymnastics community bridges that she has built by putting someone publicly on blast. But the way that you can navigate that is by saying, Yes. And I reached out to everyone who's still currently on staff. And I gave this example and said, if I hear of this ha- happening again, if, if from an athlete, like you will be removed. This is not acceptable. We don't put up with this. You don't talk to athletes that way. That's what you could do. What were your thoughts? I was surprised. I think a lot of us were surprised by the answer. Cause like, obviously she knew this question was coming. I expected something in terms of like, we're looking into it internally we're investigating like not just like well there's no way of knowing so we don't know it was kind of like the the sentiment was kind of like well there's no way of knowing right which is like of course you know yes i i understand well like i understand that sometimes like in private conversations not everything's not recorded you don't know you know what people say at various times that's fine but like you look into it you try to find out if, if, like, you genuinely don't know, if we take it at face value that she doesn't know, then you'd look into it. Yeah. You'd try. Right. And that was the and thing. It's been no, two like, weeks. There's plenty yeah. of time to have found out and investigated it by now, not just like, well, we don't know. Um, the other thing was really... Also, the other thing about that is that there were plenty of people who say, basically saying that exact same sentiment, not in those words about gold medal token, every time they were interviewed like with microphones in front of them to the media. So it's not like 
It's and that person yeah. <laughs> would be Tom Forrester, who is no longer at USA Gymnastics. So, I mean, that's the thing. It's like we all could have like yelled this out. Was a sh- like a shocking one-time thing. Like that sentiment was basically the party line leading up to the Tokyo Olympics. Right. By the person who was in charge at the time. I mean, you know, it's not hard. Uh, next time in the press conference, we should all just go one, two, three and shout it out and see how she, because if he giggles, then we know that we got the person's name right. But the other thing that was disappointing to me is when um, she was talking about how they are working again on the um, athlete wellness and training center. So basically gymnastics is going to con- con- construct its own training center mm-hmm. for all the gymnastics disciplines. So it'll be trampoline, rhythmic, artistic, men's, women's, everything all together, acro. Um, and and she made a point that it would be the wellness and training center, which is great. Um, but, you know, again, even though she says they support women and they support autonomy, she would not commit to the idea that, like, you cannot, we will not have this in a place where women and our athletes do not have equal rights or equal health care rights. We won't do that. And, I mean, the I was all I could think to myself was, you think USA Gymnastics has had bad publicity? Wait till an athlete um, is dies because they can't get access to the necessary women's health care in the state that they chose to build this Olympic training center in for gymnastics. Like, that should be the number one consideration, and then you pick where you're going to have it. I mean, it, I just... It's so infuriating that they won't put out to all of these states and to the legislatures and to the governors of these states. If you don't have access to safe abortion for everyone who needs it in your state, we won't bring this business to you. We won't build this center. We won't bring all these flights. All these athletes spent all this money here. You don't get our business because you don't deserve it. (sighs) I'm so pissed. So... Things overall, with from the athlete's perspective, things are much better. Zoe Miller said, like, I never would have twerked in front of the old, you know, <laughs> the old USA Gymnastics, but it's fun now. Joss Roberson said, um, yeah, we have it old times. You know, we couldn't even get bread. Now, the last night before training camp is over, we have an ice cream club and we all go out to Dairy Queen. Like, she's like, I would never do that. And the staff, like, encourages us. And we're like, oh, you guys, we love that you're doing this. Have fun at getting your ice cream. Like, those basic ass things have changed now and are better and more normal. But, like, the overall picture of where are we going to spend our money and build things? And, you know, well, let's put our foot down about how we treat athletes. Um, it has, you know, not all changed. So... Um, I do want to say a little bit more um, before we move on just about um, Josh Robertson really, really Mm -hmm. quick. So let's talk about what we saw for her from her. Yeah, we saw the same skills from uh, classic, except early on in the floor rotation, we saw her warm up a front full through to double A, which is another massive upgrade when she did her main her full run through um we just saw her you know her normal uh or normal her passes that we saw before yeah. from classic but she did show that she teased she did a little amuse bouche early of up another potential upgrade just a front full through to double a you know like you do Casual. Yeah, casual. Also, we're going to talk about Shailise Jones and oh my god, Shailise literally like almost face planted a front tuck step out or a front layout full step out, whatever step out she does. I can't mm-hmm. remember, but seriously, I was yeah. like, oh no, and then did a perfect double back out of it. Like, I don't need legs momentum. Nobody needs those. I'm Shailise Jones. So we have a lot to update because this is her first meet back. Yeah. Um. But and also, you guys. So I want to tell you about her, and I want to talk about the song that one of the juniors is using. That we were laughing so hard listening to this music. It was so fun. And also, there was a Jade attempted Jade attempted murder on someone. We're going to talk about that, <laughs> and we're, we're going to talk about Spencer's escort uh, a situation. Mm. In addition to the thing that uh, Jordan Childs did on floor that almost made. <laughs> He spit out my drink because it was so funny. And Jordan's cracking up in the middle of it, too. 
So this is where our regular coverage comes to an end. And we talk some more about more stuff with our Club Gym Nerd members because they're the ones that pay for the trip. They're how we can do this. So if you aren't a member, you can join um, the club at gymcastic.com. And um, if you uh, aren't a member, we'll see you back here about an hour after the first day of women's competition where we'll do another um, podcast like this. Um, and so if you are not a member, we will see you on Friday night.